All right, well, I'm here at the lathe today doing a little bit of uh, production work here. This is a product that I build, and this is the first operation on these. I've got some uh, inch round stainless steel that we are drilling and uh, threading, then parting off. We've beveled the edges and that type of thing. I thought you might just find it interesting. We've got the turret tail stock set up on the lathe and the production cross slide, as well as a hand wheel chuck set up on here. So. Um, I realize audio is bad. We got the air conditioner going. I got, we're over here next to the phase con or next to the um, VFD for the lathe, so things are noisy. I'm basically just going to let it run through and let you see the operations. Now this is not optimized at all. I don't run this quite enough yet to, to where I've got everything really dialed in, and there's quite a few changes that are going to be made on this on this setup, especially once we start converting this lathe over strictly to use it as a as a turret lathe. But um, I'll show you the setup I got. You know, position one we're using as a stop, position two center drill, and I'll probably, before we actually start machining this, go back and see if I've got a fresh center drill. This one's dull. Um, so it needs to be changed out. Then we're drilling basically a guide drill, just a small, looks like about an eighth inch. And I need to make some adjustments on this, but for this short run, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll make changes later on. Uh, then we've got two drills going through to actually bore our hole or drill our hole and then flat bottom it. And then we're going to tap it. I, I had uh, intended to just let this run through, but um, I thought rather than just letting it go along, I'll tell you everything that I know of right off the top of my head that's wrong with this setup. And there's a lot of things that make this setup far less than ideal. Now, the setup as we've got it is this is a hand wheel, 5C, call it hand wheel, chuck that I've had and uh, this is probably the first time I've run it with the production tail stock and the cross slide on it. Now both the cross slide and the tail stock have aluminum bases that I uh, cast and machined for them and they work quite well. I've got no problems with them at all but um, there's a couple of issues with them. Now on the production cross slide it's just got homemade um, tool posts there and those are going to get changed eventually but they work relatively well. Now I have produced these parts with this setup before but I used my three jaw chuck. So the way the tailstock mounts it's bolted on from the bottom of the bed and it can be set up fine but where I, I'm using this hand wheel chuck um, it actually extends out about another inch or so maybe a little bit more than the three jaw chuck that I normally run on this lathe. So what's happened is it's forced me to move that tailstock back a little bit farther. The problem that I run into is with the mounting bolts that lock it in place, um, it interferes with one of the cross ribs of the bed itself. Now when you're using a shorter chuck, this tailstock can set a little bit closer to the, to the headstock so there's enough clearance to reset everything. Um, with it in this position, it's not set properly. So I've got to make some adjustments to that and, and that will happen down the road when we f do finish converting this over to a uh, full production lathe rather than, since I've got the other Sheldon lathe, why, um, I'm assuming that one of the lathes, and I'm assuming it's this one, is going to be set up permanently as a turret lathe just for operations like this. So what's happened here with this tail stock is I've got it set too close to the headstock for where the stock is. So consequently I've got the stops in some cases completely bottomed out. Now if you look at the handle on the right hand side of the screen about on the tail stock there, why every time I retract that uh, the turret itself you'll see that handle start to move and it's actually releasing the turret because there's not enough room for me to get that tail stock back far enough to be operating everything. So, And that's an issue throughout the whole, the whole setup here. Now everything pretty much self aligns once you get the um, initial center installed in the stock that you're machining so it's not an issue but it could become an issue you know I mean it's not an ideal situation but we're dealing with what we've got the chuck's a good chuck I'm really happy with it I need to have an outboard support supporting my extra stock hanging out the back just like you would anything else where you've got quite a bit of material hanging out the end um, this particular setup is not really an issue because I think I only had about a three foot length of material in here and it aligns itself relatively well. Um, after this I ran some hot rolled uh, carbon steel that I produce these parts out of also that get blued and um, 
with that being a rough finish and not completely concentric anyway, holding it in the collet wasn't isn't ideal. Um, so I had to make sure I got the material aligned relatively well, otherwise I got quite a bit of vibration when I still had a, a fair amount of material hanging out the, the back side of the headstock. So um, as I started out saying why this most of this tooling is homemade and uh, there's some that are some pieces that are purchased tooling that I've bought off of eBay and other sources or got with machines that I bought at one point in time. Um, the first position on the tailstock is just a uh, to set the length. It's just a piece of material sticking out there. It actually is set up for the one of the smaller tailstock turrets and I've got a die head that um, I can manually operate on there. It rotates free and I can just hold on to it while we while we uh, thread a piece of round stock and that was originally built and set up to use on the Logan turret lathe so I've got the, the parts for that but in this case it works fine as a stop it's just in a, a one inch adapter. Um, second position is a center drill and I said I was going to change out to a sharp center drill I did not do that on this on the stainless steel material I just got sidetracked and went ahead and machined and ran with it that way um, when I started doing the carbon steel the, the next day, why I went ahead and changed that out. It makes a big difference. Now the third position is just a small drill to get a hole down through it, and I believe it's about an eighth inch drill. It's in a homemade tool holder, and it's an adjustable style tool holder. It was bored just for that drill or that size, so I, I believe it's probably a nominal size. I believe it's probably eighth inch. I didn't really measure it because it's not important. This is only the first operation on this material, and um, any inaccuracies, as long as the internal bore and exit hole is uh, aligned with the threads, everything else gets machined. Everything else is in the wind and not important. So little inaccuracies I can get by with on, on this operation. So I said that early, or I've said several times early on that you only have to be as accurate as necessary to get the job done properly. And this works just fine. You know, I have no problems at all. These, these blanks will, will all be remachined again, and um, there's no problem at all with concentricity or anything like that. This is a perfectly satisfactory setup for that. It's just not very efficient. So that's the second uh, or the third position on the turret. The fourth position is the first of the internal drills, and there's two of them. The, the uh, fourth and the fifth position, the first one is standard drill, and I make sure these are sharp. We want a, a good, good hole through them. And then the fifth is a drill that's been resharpened to have a flat bottom. That gives me a flat face in the bottom. And there again, works perfectly satisfactory. Now, when you look at the turret for those, those are both tool holders that I purchased uh, probably off of eBay, I would imagine. Um, the fourth one with the standard drill is a little bit smaller than the fifth one. They're both one-inch shank tools. This is a one-inch shank tool post. And um, they both work fine. They're a little bit bigger than I like. You know, they're designed for a larger turret lathe and uh, just don't work as well for, for my applications. Um, they do work, but you have to be aware of how you're positioning them on the on the tailstock, um, just to make sure you get alignment out of them so they'll clear on the back side as they rotate through. And um, you know, it's just anytime you're setting up a, a turret tailstock like this, you have to be aware of what your clearances are and where everything's positioned. Now, on both of these drills, there's a shop built collar. I built those for these drills specifically. And it's for when I have run them in the past on a standard drill chuck and a tailstock. It's just been easier to consistently have that collar on there and uh, go ahead and, and run your depths up to those collars. On a turret tailstock, it's uh, not necessary and it's not really an ideal situation at all. I should have removed them, but um, I run this so, so rarely in their set that if I do need for some reason to run one or two pieces off why I've still got the collar set at depth. When I do finally set them up properly, why well, I'll set them up. Now, in this instance where I was using the collar to set them up, I didn't have to adjust for, I didn't have to adjust the depth stops on the uh, turret itself. I just used the collar to do it. The downside to having those collars is they will retain chips and can pack up there. It doesn't, doesn't give you quite as good a chip evacuation on here as I would like to have. But there again, for 
this short run why it, it doesn't really matter. Now the one thing that would be beneficial and, and one of the major time savers um, would be to have flood coolant on this machine and I will have flood coolant when this is converted and actually I'll have flood coolant on the other shell when it's rebuilt too. Um, it just makes them easier to operate but I spend a lot of time clearing chips here um, the advantage of the flood coolant on here would be it would run it quite a bit cooler where they're, these are heating up where I'm just oiling them by hand and um, I'd get a whole lot better chip evacuation. It would clear those chips out and it would keep everything cool. So I think I would probably cut probably a third off of time. Now cycle time for these parts is about seven minutes, seven, seven and a half minutes, eight minutes, something like that. I think with flood coolant on here I'm very confident that I could cut a third of that time off of there. So we would be, I think we would be under five minutes, no problem at all by doing that. So that's definitely an advantage in, in this application. Um, now I'm deburring these by hand um, or deburring the threaded portion before I part them off. Um, that works okay. There again, I didn't take the time and there's several ways around that it should be done to, to do that. Um, now tapping this this is one of my homemade tapping heads and it was built just for this application. Uh, works exceptionally well and it's a great time saver. Um, save a tremendous amount of time by doing them this way. It works exceptionally well um, and it's it's very easy way to tap for this application. So that's pretty much what I've got for this. Parting off is um, uh, there again could be fine-tuned and will change the carbide at some point in time but it works quite well. You know I'm very happy with it. Now this tool holder here is a custom built. It was bored in the machine. You'll see the cutout up here is fits in, in these little uh, cutouts that are on each of these turrets and it helps alignment. I found it to be very precise and works quite well. 